Harvest Point Church. I'll tell you, it's it's my honor to be here uh, to serve you and to be with you. And just appreciate what the Lord's done and doing in, in our lives. Uh, it's just, you know, I, everywhere my wife and I go, we're always telling everybody in Pennsylvania or in Ohio because we have connections you know, North Carolina across this country. Uh, just, you know, what God, and, and, and understand, God gets the glory, right? Amen. Now, I don't take the glory, you don't take the glory, but God uses all of us. He uses leaderships and lay people, pastors, and what we tell everywhere we go, it's like, you know, this is what God did. And this, and how, how many of us, you know, and I, I know, when I ask the question, you know, you know I know the answer. <laughs> Very rarely do I ask a question, I don't know the answer. That's a dangerous thing to not know the answer. But how many of us really, a couple of years ago, would ever thought we'd be in a place like this? Unbelievable. You know, that's what God does. You know? That's what God does. And God gets all the credit and the glory. And we tell people everywhere, and they say, well, how many people did you have in the congregation? And I don't know exactly at that time when we were doing this, but maybe 45, 50, 55, I don't know. And they're like, man, you went and bought this place, and you're doing all of this? And you're... I'm like, yeah, you know, because uh, I'm just thankful for all of you and what God's done in life. And with that in mind, I didn't put a title on today. Only because I don't want to get in the rut. You know, it's easy to get in a rut. Get, you know, always done it this way. We always got to do it. So I just, so, uh, and welcome to those on Zoom, by the way. So my title is this. Would you like to amaze and please Jesus? Amen. Well, a couple of you do. Amen. <laughs> Maybe I should ask that again. Would you like to amaze and please Jesus? Amen. Amen. All right, that's some hands up, some amens. I'm going to tell you how to do that. Uh, and we've been doing it, <laughs> but I'm going to tell you how we can do that. It's a, and I looked up, you know, the words amaze and please in the dictionary. I think we know what they mean, but here, here's what it says. Amaze means to surprise and astonish, you know, to, to, to surprise. You know, do you, do you think it could surprise Jesus? Actually, you can and I'm going to show you that here. <laughs> Surprise and astonish Jesus. And, and to please him simply means to delight and to gratify and make somebody happy. Uh, you know, do you think we could make Jesus happy? Amen. Do you think we could you know, please him in the sense that what we're doing and what's going on would, would please him? Now, see, the problem is that a lot of times, a lot of times we try to, I call it, we get the cart for the horse. Now, some of you that are older, like I am, you know that expression. Some of the young ones may not, but sometimes we try to get the cart before the horse. Spiritually speaking, that's what I want to kind of talk to you about is not getting the cart before the horse, because sometimes the things we think that really amazes and pleases Jesus may not be the horse. We might think it's the cart. For an example, you know, uh, sometimes we think, how many people are in church was what pleases and amazed Jesus. Did you pack the place out? You know, that's what really maybe amazed and pleased Jesus. Now, it probably amazed us and pleased us. <laughs> uh, I know that probably I would like to think all of us that are here would like to see this place packed out. And then if this place got packed out, Amen. Amen. I forget how many can handle. I know the elders know, but I don't remember. Hundreds, hundreds. That could come in here and pack this place out, you know. But sometimes we think, you know, it, it's how many are in church if you pack the place out. Maybe it, it, it's it's how I'm dressed, or did I read through the Bible in a year? Now, none of those things are wrong. None of those things are wrong. You know, we, we should want to pack the place out, and and we should want to, you know, to see this thing happen and that thing happen, and God do this and God do that, and you know, and and read through the Bible, and, and all those things are wonderful. Uh, you know, music and instruments, maybe the certain music will please Jesus. You know, I think just certain music just pleases Jesus. Or do you think any music that worships him probably pleases him? You know, but what really amazes or pleases Jesus? You see, all those things are good, but all those things follow what really amazes and pleases Jesus. So let's get to that. What what is it? What really amazes and pleases Jesus? Well, faith. Faith is what really amazes and pleases Jesus. 
You know, nowhere do you read in the Bible he was ever really impressed with somebody's abilities. You know, never did he say, boy, I picked Matthew because he's such a financial genius. That's why I picked him to be the, you know, the man to take care of some money and some things were good. Never, never did you ever read that, you know, that he said, man, you know, he had such wisdom and education, and that's why I picked him. You know, that, that's why I picked him. That, that's not the reason at all. You know, he didn't say, boy, he was a genius. He was smart. But what does he say? Well, he says this. I'm going to take you to Luke, the seventh chapter, and show you what really amazes and pleases Jesus. This is the account as you're turning there. This is the account of a centurion who has a servant who's laying sick and dying. Now, understand, this is what's awesome about this. The centurion is not a Christian. The centurion is just as a centurion. He has people under him, and he has a servant who's really sick and, and dying. And so when you start to read that in the seventh chapter, it says the centurion servant, his master valued him highly, and he's sick and about to die. But here's the key. But the centurion hears about Jesus. And, you know, what he was hearing was like all the miracles that he did. Everybody was hearing about all the miracles that Christ was doing. And so he's like, well, man, I, I, somehow he has to connect with Jesus. And so he doesn't even feel he's worthy himself to go and see Jesus. And so he's talking to some of the Jews, and they're saying, well, you know, uh, let's send some, some of the elders from the Jews to go ask him. And, and so they send him, and they pick up in verse 4, it says, when they came to Jesus, they pleaded earnestly with him. This man deserves to have you do this because he loves our nation. He's built our synagogue. So Jesus went with him. And, uh, and of course, before Jesus even gets to the place where the centurion servant is, the centurion sends people out. He sends some folks out. And he says, don't trouble yourself. Don't, in verse 6, the latter part says, Lord, don't trouble yourself, for I do not deserve to have you come under my roof. He says, he says, I'm a man of authority. I tell people go, they got to go. I tell people to come, they got to come. Whatever I tell them to do, I'm a man of authority. And so somehow he's recognizing that Jesus has some kind of authority. Because he says, to the servant, you know, I tell them to do this and do that. And Jesus hears this in verse 9. And notice the word, it says, he was amazed. In the NIV, he says, he was amazed. So he was surprised. If the, if the dictionary is right, he was surprised that this man had this much faith because he says, he turns to the crowd and he says, I tell you, I have not found such great faith in all of Israel. So Jesus was amazed and pleased at this man having faith enough to say, I don't even deserve, you just speak the word, Jesus, just speak the word. I don't have to come touch you. I don't have to meet you. You're a man of authority. If you just say this, it'll be done. And of course, the rest of the story, as you know, if you read it all, he goes and the man is healed and he's glorifying God. Now, hmm, amazed about his faith. And yet, there's another way to amaze Jesus. Because even though this is a miracle and they're amazed at this, when Jesus goes back to his hometown, he couldn't do much miracles because of their lack of faith. And he was amazed at their lack of faith. So which faith would you rather have? One that amazes him and surprises him that you believe and trust him, or one that has a lack of faith that you don't believe God can? See, I'm in the opinion, according to the scriptures, nothing is impossible with God. Amen. Nothing. Doesn't matter what it is, there isn't anything. If I really believe and trust God, nothing is impossible. I think we're evidence of that. Don't you think, Harvest Boy? This is evidence. Nothing's impossible with God. When we came to help this church almost two and a half years, I mean, I didn't have this in my brain. I'm just going to fill in, preach a little bit to help you. You wanted to get something, but you have no diet, and, and God just did it. You know, we, we have faith to believe. Let's go out and lay hands on and claim it for Jesus. You remember that? I know Jeff remembers that. I know that somehow impressed him, you know, that we would all come out and lay hands. And, and it wasn't long after that that we had some faith to say, well, let's, let's, let's just get a hold of the UAW. And let's talk to him. And we had faith and faith and begin the process. And lo and behold, when well, you know the rest of the story, here we are. But it was all the point of believing. A harvest point was started over 19 years ago by faith in a home. You know, by faith. Without faith, the Bible says you cannot please God. See, faith is the trigger. 
faith is a trigger. I want to take you to, to Mark, another marvelous story about faith. Let me read in Mark, in the, in the second chapter, this is the story about a man that they wanted to get to Jesus. Remember, this is the paralytical, you know, a paralyzed man. And he had some friends that wanted to get him to Jesus. They wanted him to get healed. And they couldn't get in because the crowd was so big. I've always thought, you know, in my years of preaching, I always thought, wouldn't it be great to have a church so full of people couldn't get in? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you know, and book cut a hole in the roof. And then the elders would have a corner and we'd have to have a hammer. <laughs> I'm like myself. <laughs> but the story here, of course, is about a man and Mark that Wanted, friends want to get him saved, want to get him healed. And so their faith, now notice this, their faith is what produced this. And so we're going to get our buddy to Jesus somehow. Very unconventional. <laughs> well, cut a hole in the roof. I don't know if the people who own the house are very excited about it. You know, <laughs> cutting through the tile and all that, all that debris falling down. And then they lowered right down, you know, in front of Jesus. And of course, you know the rest of the story. Uh, he says, when Jesus, get this again, in verse 5, when Jesus saw their faith, not the man that needed healed faith, did you get that? But their faith. When Jesus saw their faith, because they believed if they could get this man to Jesus, he'd be healed. I'm going to talk about that a little bit later again. But nothing, the Bible says nothing is impossible, according to Matthew 9, 20. Nothing is impossible. And he says in there, according to your faith, it will be done. According to your faith, it will be done. See, faith is the trigger that releases divine power. Faith is what God's after. Faith is what pleases God. Faith's the key. Faith is what opens the door. We are, we are what we believe. We are what we believe. Whatever you believe, that's who you are. If you're a person that is like, woe is me, you know, chicken little, sky's falling, woe is me. Look at how everything's so bad. I mean, the world's going to hell in a handbasket. And man, this thing stinks and that thing stinks and you know, nothing's good and boy, woe is this and we're in a big trouble. That's, that's how you're going to live. But if you choose to believe that we serve an almighty God, that we serve a God who knows everything, sees everything, is everywhere at all times, a God that is in control, then that changes everything about who we are in this life. You know, it's, it's what we believe that makes us who we are. Even in this pandemic thing, you know, people say, well, aren't you afraid, preacher, of getting, getting the... No, I'm not. I am not. Now you say, well, why? Well, here's why. I'll tell you, because if I get it, guess what? Jesus is going to walk with me. People say, well, well why, why does a person get sick? Or why does a person lose their job? Or why did a person die? Or why didn't God do this? Or why didn't God do that? Well, I was watching a Hallmark show the other night. And boy, you know, it just, it, like, the, you know, the trigger went off up here. And then and I forget the lady, she was having a hard time. And there must have been the death of a child. I don't remember what it was about. But, you know, the, the man was trying to help her and encourage her. And to get her to, to see and trust God. And she's like, I don't understand. He says, Here, here's the difference. <clears throat> we can believe and trust all of God's promises. And something happened. You say, well, what? what's the deal? And, and he said this, and I love it. He says, here's why. He says, I believe in God. Here's why I trust God. Because he said, no matter what happens, here's the promise. God will walk with me side by side through it. Isn't that what the psalmist said? Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table for me to press with mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I'll dwell in the house of the Lord. The reason that I am not afraid, I don't want to get it. Sure, I don't want to get it. I don't necessarily want to die right now. I like to sit around for a while. But here's why I'm not afraid. Here's why my faith says I'm going to trust God. I'm not going to be stupid. I'm going to do some good things and be a little protective. I'm maybe not as some as others, but I'm not afraid because God will walk with me if I get that crazy thing. He'll walk with me. I can take him hand in hand. And the worst thing is I die and go to heaven. The Bible says that fear, fear is not a God. 
And I'm not just talking about the COVID. I'm talking about finances. I'm talking about relationships. I'm talking about this church going forward. The reason that I believe in what's happening here, the God that brought us to this place will not let us down. He's not a God that says, I did this yesterday, well, tomorrow I'm not doing it. He's not a God that says, I provided for you. A year ago, I won't next year. My God that did this will do that and that. When he takes you to a place, God will perform what he promised he'd do. Am I excited? Did you get the idea? Yeah, because faith is what pleases him. And I intend to believe Jesus in anything and everything. I almost died when I was a young boy of bronchitis. God brought me through. I was almost crippled. God brought me through a surgery. God has taken care of me time and time again. I don't know why. I don't know why I'm here. But I'll be here until God says time's up. And nobody's going to take it until God says I'm done. Amen. 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 Wow. <laughs> I kind of like preaching this one. We kind of like you. But, <laughs> but your faith, our faith, will take us no higher than what we can believe. Amen. No higher than what we can believe. Faith is everything. The two most important, two most important truths I'll communicate to you is that first is the life of faith. In Hebrews 11, 6, you know it. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. In fact, the scripture says, Whatever is not of faith is of sin. Man, that, that can, that, you can chew on that thing. You know, whatever is not of faith is sin. Right. And you know, Hebrews 11, of course, that's the faith chapter. And, and I love it. And I, I just want to read just a, a short portion out of the Message Bible, just, just to kind of emphasize this faith thing. It, it says the fundamental fact of existence is that this trust in God. Now, I'm, I'm hoping to link this together and show you how trust and faith hand in hand. You can't have one without the other. He says, this, this faith is a firm foundation under everything that makes life worth living. It's our handle on what we can't see. The act of faith is what distinguished our ancestors. It set them above the crowd. By faith, we see the world called into existence by God's word. What we see created by what we don't see. And, and, and I like the word it, it kept saying in, in Hebrews, the act of faith, the act of faith, the act of faith, the act of faith. You know, and of course, it goes on to say, Noah built an ark with no rain. I mean, that still blows my mind away. I mean, no rain at all. They never had rain back then. They didn't know what rain was. You know, can you imagine God telling Noah, I want you to build an ark? I don't know if he told me that. I'm like, God, are you real? <laughs> you, you sure you know what you're talking about? Building art. What, what do I need to vote for? We never have rain. And, and the worst of that, I think, could have been all of those people that the Bible talks about made fun of him, laughed at him. You know? Sometimes when you church, when you step out in faith, the world doesn't understand it. Amen. You know, the world says, you can't do this, you don't have enough money. Yeah. But faith says, God has a resource. Faith that is taking care of us now financially, I believe faith will take care of us financially tomorrow, the next day, and the next day, and the next day, and the next day, and the next day. Now, that doesn't mean we won't have difficulties in our life personally. I don't mean the church won't go through difficulties, but I believe that God will take care of his people and do what he promised. I don't believe God takes you someplace and then drops you off the end. If he takes you, we used to thought, if he takes you to the edge of a tree and a limb, he's going to catch you if the limb falls. And it, but it goes on, I just love it, it says, you know, by faith Noah built, by faith this happened, by faith, by faith, by faith, the act of faith, Abraham went when God told him to go, didn't know where he was going, by faith, act of faith, by the act of faith Isaac, by the act of faith Jacob, by the act of faith Joseph, by the act of faith Moses, by the act of faith, and then and here it says, and I can go on and on and on and on, by faith all these things happen, even some people, when you read down to the end of Hebrews 11, even some people never got to see the promises, but they still believed and trusted God right to the end because they knew eventually, and that gets a lot of theological part that I can't go into, they, they believed eventually that Jesus would come, and by their faith and our faith, we would put together and heaven would open up someday. By faith, by faith, it just goes on, by faith, by faith, by faith, the life of faith. 
It's the ability, the life of faith, the ability to consciously and unconsciously believe God and trust Him for everything. It's a part of our life. You know, I want, you know, we, we live our life on faith. This morning I got up and flipped the light on. What made me think it'd come on? I mean, I went out to my car and turned the key on, expected it to, to start. Now, I know you can say, well, sometimes I don't, but see, my faith just figured it would. It's just always dead. Are you getting this? The light switch always came on. Why do I trust God? Because he always comes on. He's always on the scene. Most of our life, we do a lot of things by living in faith. Things that we just take for granted. But it's faith that pleases God. It's the foundation of who we are. The writer in Hebrews says you can't please him. Right. You cannot amaze him. You cannot astonish him. You can't surprise him. You can't gratify him unless it's by faith. Then all the other stuff comes afterwards. Then the church can grow and we can shout hallelujah. Then so-and-so can get healed and we can shout hallelujah. And so-and-so can get saved and we can shout hallelujah. But it all comes out of faith first. First and foremost. It's everything that holds us together. The second is the walk of faith. We used to have a saying, saying years ago, one minister in the church that says, anybody can talk the talk, but you have to walk the walk. Anybody can talk a good game, but you have to walk the walk. Remember remember the man who was paralyzed? I said I'd come back to it. Remember, they had faith to get this man to Jesus. Now, they could have said, well, you know, we're praying for this man to get saved. We're praying for this man to get healed. That's good enough. No. Sometimes your faith has to have an action behind it. And they had to get that man physically to Jesus. It wasn't enough to just say, well, we, we, got, we got faith in Jesus. If we get him, you know, they had to, you understand what I'm saying? There are people you may be praying for, loving on, wanting to get saved, wanting to get healed. You may want the church or whatever it can be. And sometimes God says, okay, you got the faith, but do something with it. And it's enough to say, I believe, I believe, you know, we're going to go to James a little bit. And in James, it was always an amazing scripture in there when he said the devils believe and tremble just because they believed didn't make them believers right. you see action always follows faith if you really have faith you're going to put your feet to it you're going to put your hand to it if you if you believe if you really believe that you can trust god then you can give 10 percent of your income <laughs> that always scares people yeah i just thought i'd sneak that in <laughs> I was reading, I was reading something I thought I should have given to her for the offertory. By the way, there's a box over there, that's where you can put your offering in. And I was reading this, well, Dan Shaw's ministries. So I was reading this little article. I hope I get it right, but he said a man was in church and you know they needed repairs in the church and everything. And and uh, the man says, I'll 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 pledge a thousand dollars, Pastor. And he went to sit down and a piece of flash plaster fell on his head. Huh, oh, I'll I'll up with the five thousand, Pastor. <laughs> And uh, he moved a little further and sat down and some more plastic. He said, I'll, 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 I'll double, I'll make it 20,000. Somebody in the congregation, congregation yelled out, hit him again, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can go on. But faith says, faith says, do you really, do you really believe you can trust God? It's, in the, it's a life of faith and it's a walk of faith. Galatians 5 25 says, If you live in the Spirit, then you must walk in the Spirit. Walk is an active verb. If you really are living in the Spirit, in tune with God, in touch with God, God's Spirit's inside you. You really say you trust God. See, that, that's the real key here. Do you really trust God? Do I really trust God? Do we really trust God? Because if we really trust God, then there can be no doubt what God can do. No doubt at all what God can do. You know, I've shared things with you in the past. I'll probably share some things again because some people are new to the church and they may need to hear some things I said two years ago or a year and a half ago. You know, you may say, well, I heard that message a year ago. Well, maybe you need to hear it again. <laughs> it always amazes me, you know, people often thought, uh, I don't want to hear, you know, you preach the same message. How many of you like the same song over and over? Yeah, we sing songs over and over and over. And if you go to a concert, you know, people used to go to the Gaither's concerts, and there's always a request for a certain song. 
you know, what was the one we liked? Uh, your buddy. Which one? Your buddy, <laughs> long hair, the cowboy boot. The... I know, I know. But... Guy Penrod. Guy Penrod. And I forget what song. There was a song he sang, you know, and everybody's requesting it every time they went to it. They didn't mind hearing the song again. What's wrong with hearing the message again? Now, you haven't heard one again, but you may. <laughs> one because we may need to hear it again, you know. You may need to be reminded. Somebody else may need to hear it. But, you know, I could go on and tell you time and time again. One of the most things that always amazed me that I can tell people about faith, when our daughter Jody, most of you met her, some of you haven't, when she was just little, we lived in New Bethlehem, pastoring, and we had a parsonage that was a two-story. And I'll never forget this, talking about faith and trust. She'd stand at the top of the stairs. Daddy, catch me. And I mean, I'm going to be ready to catch her. <laughs> she just, she, she believed her daddy would catch her. I mean, if I, if I if turned my head and went, I mean, she's coming. She's launching off that thing on top, you know, and I'm catching her. Because see, she believed in her heart, her daddy wouldn't let her down, let her fall. That's how it comes to you and I and God. Do you and I really believe? Do we really believe and trust God's promises or not? Because if we really do, then we'll put our faith in action and we'll put feet to our prayers and our faith by what we do. And she would launch off that thing and I'd kept her time and time again. In fact, in James, and that's the scripture I told you I wanted to, to go to in James, the second chapter, just a couple quickies here. In verse 14, it says, What good is my brothers if you claim to have faith and no deed? Can, can such faith save them? And he goes about his brother, sister, indeed, and so on. You know, he said, in the same way, faith itself, in verse 17, if it's not accompanied by action, it's dead. And he goes on down in 20 and 21, talking about Abraham and all of that. In verse 22, see his faith and his actions were working together, and faith was made complete by the action. And then over 26, as the body without the spirit's dead, so faith without deeds or action is dead. Now, it's a hand in glove. It's a duality. Deeds alone, good deeds don't save us. And this may bother you, but faith alone doesn't. According to James, you've got to have them both. If I really have faith in Jesus, then I need to live the life that Jesus wants me to live. I need to do what he wants me to do. You see, faith can take care of everything. You've got some kind of problem, some kind of habit, something you want to get rid of in your life. God can take care of it. God can heal your body. I know not everybody is healed. I don't understand that all. But every Christian is healed ultimately. You know what I'm talking about. But I have seen people healed. Myself personally, I've seen what God can do. And if I have faith, God can take care of this. God can take care of every situation in my life. Faith is adventurous. Faith is full of, I like this, faith is full of inventions. Faith is risky. Faith is risky. Sometimes... You're like, wow, I don't know. How's that going to work out? Can I do that? Can we do that? Faith works on the principle of the supernatural. See, whatever you and I can do by our own hands and wisdom and knowledge isn't faith. Faith is only what you and I can't do and can't figure out. Then it becomes faith and supernatural. Faith works on that principle. What's daring to be different? Faith is what most people need to do to get to Jesus. Faith is always inventing new things. You know, shouldn't, shouldn't Christians, shouldn't we as Christians, shouldn't we be the pace setters? Shouldn't we be the ones in this world of all the negativity and all the fear and all the doubt? Shouldn't we be the ones to say, I'm not giving into it? Shouldn't we be the ones to say, we're going forward for Christ. We're going to do what God wants us to do, no matter what the world says. No matter what this person says, that person says. Shouldn't we be the ones? We, I don't think we should be the ones to say, government, tell us how we should do. Tell us how we should act. Tell us what we can do and not do. I don't think it needs to be other people telling us. I think we need to do what God wants us to do. If we really trust him. Some people say, well, you know, I'm just really struggling with this thing. I'm really trying, trying to get through the struggle with this thing. I want to say something as lovingly as I can say to you, okay? You got to quit trying and struggling. Mm -hmm. A life of faith is not about trying and struggling. I know we have struggles, don't misunderstand me. But a life of faith is getting to the place where you just do it. Where you just do it. You know? 
It's not about I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying. It's a matter of trusting. Do you, do I, do we really believe God? Do we believe everything he says in here or only parts? Do you believe he's only good enough to save you, but he can't keep you? Do you believe he's only good enough to help you, but he can't deliver you? Do you believe he's only good enough for that, but not taking care of the future? See, faith is a matter of trust. When you go back and read Hebrews and read the rest of the scripture, it was always about, I trust God so much. See, trust, here's the definition of trust. It's having confidence and believe, belief in somebody. Trust is having confidence and belief in somebody, the, the reliability in that person. So do I really believe in God is reliable and trustworthy? If I do, then I can have faith to trust him no matter what's happening, no matter what's going on in my life. Hebrews 12, 2 says, fixing your eyes on Jesus, who is the author and finisher of your faith. Oh, my. I guess, would you like to amaze Jesus? Would you like to please him? Well, now you know how to. We used to sing a song, trust and try. Oh, no, trust and obey. Trust and obey. <laughs> you see, faith and trust just says, I'm going to obey. I don't understand how it's going to work out. I don't know what's going to happen. But I'm just going to trust him. I'm going to trust him and obey and do what he wants me to do. Have faith, believe me, to the point of obedience. Well, I hope you want to amaze and please Jesus. <laughs>